The Manchester United players believe Ten Hag is going to be sacked at the end of the season after recent changes in his behaviour. Jason Wilcox looks set to be joining Manchester United in the coming weeks and reliable sources have pretty much confirmed this. The deal is looking close. While Dan Ashworth isn't as close, there's still a hope going on there. And we will talk about everything going on at United behind the scenes. And one of the best things going on behind the scenes at United is the changes to the academy. And Manchester United are recruiting some more top talents to bring into the academy. And then we'll be talking about Malassia. We've got a really long and detailed story about everything that's gone on with Malassia and the whole situation explained which what I'll do is I'll sum up the main points of that story for you guys so lots to get into I'm going to try and get through all this news in 10 minutes so just give me your time smash a like smash a subscribe and let's start with the first story now the first story as you can see at the top I put Neil Custis dot 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 Neil Custis is a top bs -er. he is one of the worst sources of information he used to have some credibility but then he started saying things like Qatar is done Qatar is done this that this that where he's kind of ruined all credibility he's kind of letting his agendas and what he wants get in the way of his reporting so you know on the channel I report every news story but I also tell you if the news stories come from someone credible or not if Laurie Whitwell comes out for a report I'll say Laurie Whitwell is very good if Neil Custis comes out for a report I will let you guys know that he's not great but he did say this and the reason I've included this is because it interlinks with something I'm going to get into in a second so according to Neil Custis now take a pinch of salt Manchester United players fear Eric Tenag has now resigned himself to the sack at the end of the season a number of United players have noticed a change in the demeanor of Eric Tenag in recent weeks. Now, I don't know what Tenog's future is or not. I don't think anyone knows. I think there's as many reasons to say he'll be staying as as many reasons to stay, say he'll be going. I think there's so many reasons why Enios might keep him and there's so many reasons why Enios might sack him. I think there's 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 real reasons for either way. I'd like Tenog to stay and be given time, but I would understand if he was sacked because you look at how bad the football is and how we're being dominated. I think, to be honest, Ineos' decision on sacking Tenag will depend on the managers available to replace him because Amarin to Liverpool, Liverpool, Xavi Alonso not available, Barca and Bayern need a manager. I don't think they would sack Tenag and replace him with Southgate. I think they'd sack Tenag and replace him with Deserbi or Pep or someone that they like. Now, not comparing Deserbi to Pep, but we know that that's what Ineos like. Now, the United Muppeteers went into a bit of detail and they did sort of give a weird indication around Tenor's future. Now, the United Muppeteers have been very accurate with all the information they've dropped sort of in the last year and a half. And they have their podcast, which has been summed up by this guy here on Twitter, that said that Ineos is stressing that it's time to push and make some decisions. They've also said that negotiations for Wilcox are going smoothly. The expectation is that it will join in the next week or two. And they also said that Ineos are ready to push for Ashworth, but Newcastle are making it hard. That's sort of the latest, that Ineos want to get these big decisions done. Ashworth to stress, Wilcox, they believe, will be able, they will be able to get done. Um, he also said they want Ashworth and other people who are coming to make a decision on Eric and possible candidates. He is saying that things are really leading to that Eric will be sacked, but it's kind of mysterious about it, and Ineos want leading recruitment. So the United Muppeteers, who've been quite... Um, almost suggesting that they think Eric Tenog will stay and now sort of turning the tide and suggesting that Tenog will be sat. You know, Fabrizio Romano, who's always said that Tenog will stay, Tenog will stay, said, start to stay and no decision's been made yet. It feels like the tide has turned a little bit in recent weeks, but maybe they don't want to make any decision until they've got Ashworth and Barada and people's approval. It was also said the deal for Bramfweight has many positive signs. It's still likely he will join... Um, uh, Everton need to sell Anana and Bramthwaite and they will most certainly leave, which is an interesting update. I think Bramthwaite will leave Everton, but I think there will be a lot of clubs interested in him. I don't know how likely he's going to come to United. And they said that he was mysterious in the video. He repeated many things and it, that he said in previous videos, but the general feeling I got is that Tenog will be gone from the United Muppeteers video. And you can obviously go check that out if you want to watch the full thing. But you've now got the United Muppeteers and a bit of a twist in the media saying, you know, Tenog's future isn't certain. The only problem is I could be here in two days' time reporting news that Tenog's staying and that they've already agreed that he's going to stay because one week it's Tenog's going, the next week it's Tenog's staying. Um, but the United Muppeteers are quite a credible source of information. So I do think that is definitely one to keep an eye out on. Now, something I wanted to talk about as well as Academy Scoop have been very good with their Academy news lately. And I did a video actually uh, last week talking about the Academy players that United are linked to. And four of these players, three, three out of these five players, I've actually done a video on in my video about, you know, the Man United Ineos Nice Academy plan. Uh, but the United Scoop again confirmed interest in these players. He said Man United scouting department are putting increased emphasis on South, South American recruitment opportunities ahead of the summer, hindered by financial fair play. The following players have been watched, Jimenez and Salimo. Uh, Mas, 
mass, I'm going, I'm going to mess up his name, Franco, Ian and Thomas Palmo are sort of players that we've looked at. I've covered Thomas Palmo and Salimo and Gimenez in a recent video. I said that United were looking at them and I gave him you a little bit of insight on who those players were. So definitely go check out that video if you've not already. It's about a week old. Um, and it said that any potential signers could be signed or loaned out to Ineos owned clubs, Nice and Lasson as part of the development. So they could be signed by Nice and Lasson. They could be signed by United and loaned to Nice and Lasson. But they are sort of some of the young players that we're looking at. And I think one thing that's going on at United is we're looking at a lot of South American talents to use and utilise multi-club ownership. They're looking to bring in a sporting director um, who would oversee Man United, Ineos, Man United uh, Nice and Lasson and the relationship between them as well. They're looking at doing recruitment in South America. And I think we could bring a few gems in. Now, it was also said on Jason Wilcox this, and this is looking positive. They said the expectation is that Man United will have completed the appointment of Jason Wilcox as the new technical director in a week or two, and that United are closing in an agreement with Southampton for a compensation fee. It looks like Jason Wilcox to United will be done. In my live stream yesterday, we spoke about how important it is to get Wilcox and Dan Ashworth in, and it looks like Wilcox will be coming in, which is good news. Bish, bash, bosh. But I want to talk about Malassia. I feel sorry for Malassia. I think he will be here next season and I hope he can be good because I thought he was really important for us in some of the big games last season. But we got a bit of stories giving context on the whole Tyrell Malassia situation. It was said, Tyrell Malassia had first started to feel pain in his knee in earlier 2023, but eager to impress and keep playing, he did not immediately report his complaint to the club, which happens a lot in football. Scans on the affected knee has revealed that small fragments of cartilage remained around the meniscus. Man United agreed to that request of Malassia and he travelled home, which was conducted outside the club oversight. Um, so Man United recommended a doctor in London. Malassia wanted to go back home to have the operation, which I understand because, you know, a lot of players have been ignoring Man United doctor recommendations because they've not been the best. Um, but because he went abroad, Man United can't oversee the operation. But I guess he wants to be with his family. It's a big operation to undergo. After the decision was made to undergo surgery, as his knee was still causing discomfort, Manchester United proposed a surgeon in London, but Malassia wished to undergo treatment in the Netherlands with his own choice of surgeon, which might have been a bit of a mistake. Continuing on to the second part of the story, it said this season's long, con this season's consistently long injury list at Old Trafford has been a factor, sometimes stretching the medical department's resources and other players are set to return sooner and have taken priority over Malassia, which is an absolute joke absolute joke there should be a medical attention for every single player there even if the list is massive we understaffed in the medical department we're underqualified in the medical department that's something that any of us need to resolve i'm sorry i don't like to be negative but the medical department it, this, this season is a joke and yes yeah, some of it comes down to ten and trench training some of it comes down to there being more matches matches are longer the, the impact of the world cup last season but our medical staff Clearly short and neglecting players. Didn't find Casemiro injury, went abroad, they found an injury. Didn't Fort Martinus was okay to come back in September, he wasn't. Told Luke Shaw he'd come back, he wasn't. So I'm fed up, I'm fed up with our medical department. It's dead that it's still a few weeks away. While Tyro Molassi is only expected to complete his recovery towards the very end of the season, it's expected to be a full recovery and not have long-term impact. And that was the worrying thing when he's been out for that long and when it's a knee. There's always the worry of, is that going to impact him long term going into next season? A bit like Luke Shaw's leg break, which I think resulted in Luke Shaw getting more injuries, but didn't too much impact him because we know how good Luke Shaw can be. And I think Luke Shaw would have been even better if it wasn't for that leg break. And um, not comparing a leg break to Tyrone Molasses injury, but do you know what I mean? Like, will it impact him next season is the worrying question. And they said that Molasses is back at Carrington this week, but will continue to work with an external specialist and travel between United and Barcelona and his home country until he's ready to join first team training. So Malassia is on the return. He is expected to come back, but I don't think we're going to see him in a Man United shirt till next season, which is such a shame. But anyway, guys, that was a little less than 10 minutes summary of all the news today. Tenog future, it looks like the news reports are turning to say it's not looking good. But again, no confirmation, no one really knows. But more credible sources are sort of turning to Tenog staying and then planning for him next season with it's not looking as good now. It's not looking as good now. I, I generally think Tenog's future depends on if there's good candidates to replace him or not. Wilcox should be in. Ashworth is stressing out Ineos. There's going to be a bit of a delay there. Um, Malassia is on the way to return, and that is the full story about Malassia. And definitely keep an eye on a few South American gems being linked to United. Please hit the like button. Please do subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye.